What's going on guys? So today on this Shoki review, we're going to take a look at this awesome little machine. We have the HGUC Mobile Suit Gundam 8th MS Team RX-79G Gundam Ground Type. And this is actually one of the next generation of Gundam because of course the original grandpa was the RX-78. Although that timeline's a little bit muddled due to the fact that this was somehow parallel developed to the grandpa. We've kind of covered that before, if you go check out the What is a Gundam video. But either way, we have a great shot here of three different uh, ground types going on here. So this guy has the enormous cannon. This guy's got a little machine gun. This guy also has a machine gun. Um, I don't believe they're meant to be the same one, but this one has the refrigerator backpack. This one has a refrigerator backpack. That one doesn't seem to have a refrigerator backpack. And we have a dead Zaku laying right here. So, I've never actually watched it, but everybody tells me that it's the series to watch, or even a mini-series, whatever you want to call it. Either way, we got Bandai 2018 down here, a whole bunch of stuff in Japanese, which is pretty cool. I actually really like this box art. I like the uh, background here with the cliffs and uh, waterfalls. Very serene. I like the battle images and stuff like that. They're very dirty. Very, very nice box art. But everybody keeps wondering why I bother to look at the box. It's because it's part of the kit. It's, it's something you're purchasing along with the plastic, and somebody put time into making it, so that's why I look at the box. So let's continue to look at the box. If you come to the bottom, you've got RX-79G Gundam ground type, and you've got obligatory rear and front shots, where right there you totally just see the refrigerator on the back. You've got actions, wide range of motion, and various gimmicks allow the reproduction of powerful actions. Powerful actions. And you got articulated backpack. That sounds really strange, but technically true. Beam sabers are stored in the legs. Yup. And you got left hand, open hand parts are attached. I think they're more included than attached, but hey, that's a thing. Weapon container. It's a refrigerator box. Come on. Container can store a divided 180 millimeter cannon. Markings. Yeah, no kidding. And then you got all the weapons broken down right there. So you got cannon, sabers, machine gun, beam rifle, shield. And we come around to this side, and you've got all this HGUC stuff there, number 210 in the line. So right after our good friend Blue Destiny, that was 209, RX-79G Gundam Ground Type, as usual. Bandai Hobby on that! Okay. And yeah, look at that. Look at that. Pretty, pretty ground type. And we come to the final side, and we've got the read-up there. And if you want to go ahead and read it, by all means... Okay, and you got some really cool box art right there. It's actually not included. It's not on the cover, so I really do dig that. For illustration purposes only, no kidding. <laughs> I feel like they didn't need to say that, although totally killing a Zaku there. That's pretty badass. All right, so you got uh, warnings right there. Please don't stick a three-year-old in your Gundam's face. It'll probably hurt them. And you come over here, and you got a poly bag with there's the little guy with the toilet. You got 1,700 yen. Really nice and affordable kit. Uh, mildly, just barely more expensive than the Blue Destiny was, right? Somebody go look. And then you've got Hinoshita Tomotake. I don't believe I've ever seen that person's work, but it's pretty phenomenal, even though it's upside down. Yeah. All right, let's go ahead and get to the Gundam. Sorry, once again, no build montage. I'm going to get back to them. I really do. There's a couple kits I really want to do build montages for again. So look forward to that in the future. But in the meantime, Gundam ground type... Alright guys, here we have the ground type, really just kind of chilling after a battle or in the middle of a battle, he's just done, either way, and I don't know, I was I was posing it for, uh, I was posing it for uh, thumbnails, and kind of just made this happen as it were, and it's kind of funny to show off the different stuff, um, so yeah, <laughs> but uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get to the actual breakdown right now. Okay, so now we've got the ground type up and mobile, pun intended. And this thing is really, really cool. From the more off-white coloring to, like, normal Gundam to the nice navy, almost dark blue going on there in the chest. The really asymmetrical design going on here, which I believe is a, a gun over here, or a uh, Vulcan, more or less. A big chest vent on this side. Big red 
center section there instead of the normal style vents. That's pretty cool. The head is a new, new design versus the ones we've looked at previously. It doesn't want to focus on that. You do get stickers for the eyes and the camera front and rear. I do like the new inclusion of the side side vents there. I really do like that. So it wasn't a rehash of stuff we have looked at. The shoulders, on the other hand, are very, very similar to some to things we've looked at, but they're not identical. So they're actually very flat, almost no detail to them whatsoever, but they do still have the handles on each side. I need to adjust my lighting slightly. Hold on. So, yeah. Uh, it still has the same kind of stickers that the Blue Destiny did, so it still has the little triangle here on the front. And you got a yellow one on the back side there of the thing. And then you got little ones here and here. So similar but different than the previous kind of suits that we've looked at. Um, yeah. One sticker you would get is right here for this. I actually went ahead and painted it just to do something a little bit different. Uh, it's a, it's just a normal foldover kind of sticker. It's not the cleanest job in the world. I just did it with a Gundam marker. And then also down here on the leg vents, painted those yellow. I did not get a chance to dab the tiniest bit of gray in there on the vents themselves. But it looks pretty good. Even the shadows really do help. Uh, word of warning, this little white part that goes around the vent is a separate piece, as is the yellow part there. This part, because it only is just around that, tends to pop off. I actually glued mine just a tiny little bit of Tamiya uh, Ultra Thin Cement, and it pretty much stays in place now. No problem. You get the same kind of ammo canisters here on the side skirts that we've seen a dozen times so far. But yeah, I like the I like the knee protrusions here. They actually stick out pretty decently, so he can knee somebody to death if necessary. I appreciate that, usually. <laughs> Let's do articulation real quick, because it is a different mold, a different Gundam. So it's based off of things we've seen, but done differently. So we might as well look at articulation and stuff. So the head is on a hinge. I think, yeah, it's on a, its own hinge up here. So it can look forward, you can look back. He can rotate, however, he's hitting the collar around the side, so it, it might be necessary to actually trim up the side of that cheek right there to really achieve maximum rotation, and the chin itself does tend to get in the way. And I have popped off the red the red thingy here on the crest a couple times, so just be wary of that. The, the molded detail around the head and neck is actually very nice. I also like that it comes off like this, similar to how some of the master grades do, where you would stick the LED. So that actually, and there's how you have the hinge for the head, by the way. I know I normally don't take things apart to show inner workings, but I really do dig that. <laughs> Plus, uh, the head itself doesn't tend to come off the ball joint that easy. Uh, the shoulders are on captured thingies there in the chest. It's very different from the way the uh, Blue Destinies do where the butterfly goes up. And also, uh, there is a thing, these are hard plastic. I accidentally used the polycap ones at first without thinking, and I uh, had to change it out. They will work, although for holding up the heavy weapons later on, uh, the polycap will give out more over time. So you really want to use the hard plastic ones. Just be wary of that. So they do come out about that far. You can rotate all the way around, as you should. You can reach up about that far. You do get bicep rotation and nice double-jointed elbow to flex. And you can get a decent high teacher, although the way this extra shoulder armor works and then goes up inside the the actual shoulder bit, um, I guess technically the bicep armor if you're really going to go there, uh, you lose a little bit there. But the the actual bend there is actually very good. You get nearly 180. Gotta love that. And you do have the same kind of wrist that we have from before. So the hand itself is a ball joint, but then you've got this thing in here, which is also ball joint mounted. So... You get decent movement, not just rotation. Now, the chest and the torso is lined up very much like the Blue Destinies. I guess I appreciate that that happened on camera, because you guys probably wouldn't believe me, that that happens all the time. So the way that that is set up, it's a single rotation joint here and ball joint that mounts up inside the chest. Now, the main problem with what just happened is it's nearly impossible to put that back together. So what should have been a nice ab crunch, in fact, just completely took the Gundam apart. And 
I guess that's about as good as it's going to get. The This center armor here is just loose. There's nothing holding it in there. It is just totally loose. And as you maneuver the Gundam around, it's just going to be in and out of the way as it goes. So if you have that problem with this kit, please let me know. You do get rotation in between and at the waist, so, I mean, it gives you some decent articulation, except everything can to want to fall apart. We do get hip skirts that do move independently. I think it tells you to actually separate them, so clearly you're going to anyway, so you can kick those up. Side skirts go up that far, and you can kick up if you get the knee around the skirt. Very nice front kick. No back kick, really, but you can get a step if you need to. Double jointed knee. It's very nice. Thigh rotation as you do. Jean-Claude, like so. I feel like I haven't done proper... Yeah, I don't think I've really done proper articulation on any of these kits in a while, because I've been doing redo kits over and over. The uh, ankle does start way up here, so you get some hefty fore and aft kicking there. And then you got ball joint mount there. And then, get that out of the way, you've got armor that moves on the ankles themselves, and you've got toe pivot. You got actually individual toe pivot there on an HG. I really do appreciate that because I don't believe that the Blue Destinies had that, or if they do, that's not done nearly as well, even though these are almost the same kit. And I stress the almost. But you can get them in some decent poses as long as you remember that that uh, backpack is weird. Now we'll show this. This is a problem on mine. That, that particular shoulder joint has gotten a little bit weak. It's probably going to need a little bit of nail polish or something to help tighten it up. But for the most part, articulation is very good. Details are very nice on this kit. The reason I'm doing that first is because he does have plenty of weapons and a lot to show off. So now we're gonna go ahead and do that. All right, so first and foremost, we'll take a look at something that we've seen repeatedly. You've got the ground type shield. So we've seen this all the way back to the gym ground type, and there's a reason for that. And I went with the big 08 because that's really the stickers that you get, or they tell you to kind of use. But you do, in fact, get a whole number sheet. So you can do whatever you want, you know, within reason, because clearly they don't give you enough numbers for everything. But, hey, it is what it is. And it does mount to his arm via this tab right here. So just clink, like so, and you can rotate it, no biggie. Now, the handle itself should be painted gray. I just didn't do it. I wanted to leave it white because this guy's already got enough dark stuff on him whatsoever. But feel free to definitely paint that with whatever gray you feel like using. Now, he does have a couple things you can do. In fact, you can swing it out, like so, if it were to be pegged on the arm. So you have this hinge, although probably never will. He does also have the sandwich board. Anybody need a Gundam? Gundam for sale? See if you can go back to the video that I actually brought that up. But I dig it. I like the shield. It is what it is. We've looked at it multiple times on multiple other Gundams or Gundam shaped things. Now he does actually have the expressive left hand as we discussed. So very much like the Blue Destinies tend to have. And the only thing is he has different backs of the hands. They're very thick and chunky. I really appreciate that. So you could totally be expressive. And there's this hi teacher. Hi. Hi, my name is Gundam Grand Tap. So it's pretty cool. Let's go like that here. Let's just let's get him where let's see if I can get him where his hand just chilling. Yeah. You draw. No. You draw first. He doesn't have hip mounted guns, but he does have machine gun. And it's the same kind of machine gun we've seen time and time again. Well, it kind of started with this guy in the first place, I think. Fold-out stock. Uh, ammo clip. Canister. Magazine. Whatever you want to call it. I don't know how it works, technically speaking. And you just slap that in the hand. And you've got, boom, boom. Kill that over there. He's going to go full gangster cell. No look sideways shot. Boom. Shoot that thing over there. I do wish he had uh, weapon storage for these little guns. He also has the beam rifle we've seen before with the Blue Destinies. At least the last two of them have had this guy. Uh, it's a cool weapon. I really do appreciate it. You do have the camera sticker that comes with it in there. 
And it actually has a decent construction for what it is, so I like it. So you can totally do that if you want. Holds it very nicely. He also has beam sabers, so you do come with the beam blades. And I didn't show it off the last couple times, but you do have the hidden beam saber in the little pocket down here. So you can just sort of, you know, kick it open like that if you want. Which, by the way, guys, if you want to go back and look at some the first kind of Gundam ground type I ever looked at, you can go back and look at the EZ-8 that we looked at a few months ago. That would be up here in the, the little eye thingy. Get out of my way! Alright, so the thing that everybody wants to see, the big party piece of this guy, is the refrigerator. Look at this thing. It is literally just a huge bunk. You know, wow. I mean, big old thing. I mean, you can look at it. It is literally the entire size of his torso and hips. That's a big boy. And this is a loose shoulder. Now, what you do is you come back to this really cool looking backpack. And it's similar almost to the way some of the other ones do. But you only get these two big old thrusters, which I found out of after... All this and looking at the box, should the inside of those should be painted red, but it is what it is. So that articulated backpack. Look, it has fingers. You get fingers on your backpack. And then you can come down here and you drop that part down. And then you have a slide hinge there. And now he's ready to gobble you up. Just <laughs> Okay. Sorry, I've been watching a lot of Five Nights at Freddy videos. Whoa, whoa. Autofocus took a dump there. What happened? That was crazy. All right, so take the backpack. You got big old nubs there. You've got grooves on the top and the bottom. And you just line everybody up and slap it on there. And then you close up the bottom. And now he's carrying his own personal refrigerator brought to you by Frigidaire. Frigidaire is the official refrigerator used by the Earth Federation forces. I definitely would love to have a Frigidaire logo like right there. That'd be funny. And like have another one that's by GE and they're like why did you buy that brand I don't know but once you have that on him he is absolutely back heavy there's just no way to get around it you kind of have to put him on a little bit of a forward lean and plant the heels because those feet actually never want to sit flat they always want to rock they always want to rock come on stand on your own feet man there now he can stand, sort of, but he's in a really wonky thing. I kind of wanted to have him in, like, a pose where, like, if he was, like, sort of carrying a backpack, like, it's just, like, constantly. I need to get the other hand on here, but he's like, mm, mm, mm. Like, just constantly carrying a backpack with him. In fact, I need the other hand for the rest of this review, so let's go ahead and pop that on his back. So, he's like this. Man, this backpack is heavy. What do you guys got in here? Either way, I'm a dork, I know. So let's go ahead and pop open the backpack, because there's a whole reason it's here in the first place. You go back there with your, I can't hold anything up because my weak, weak ankles. Actually, it's not even your ankles that are weak, it's your heels. They should have given them bigger heel spurs. So to open up said backpack, flip that up, flip that down, and now you've got the world all up in there. And it is a movable tray, but first and foremost, let's go ahead and remove that for a second. Grab the bottom of the tray, and you slide it out. And the entire thing comes out. But there's actually the very cool insides. Now, remember when I said back in a Grimoire review that, you know, they, they have basically had a Gundam ground type backpack? Well, there you go. It's almost the exact same kind of construction, except no mini mores in there. Although, that'd be a fun, fun thing to do. Just make the whole Gundam head fly around with some hands and feet on it. So, let's set the refrigerator to the back, back there. And let's assemble a shimbrel, our 180 millimeter cannon. So, you oink the thing out of the middle, you oink the thing off the side, you oink the two thingies over here. Now, you actually do build this thing in this kind of construction and then assemble it later. So, you've got grooves and such and things there to line up with tabs on this side. Words. Flip down the handle, and now you've got this cool thing. You want to grab this chunk here with the two little parts there, and you want to insert with this tab going into there and these little posts going into those holes there so assemble the gun and then you've got this guy you want to do it with the kind of really crappy gappy 
area there facing down. And there you go. You have a big old gun. Big old gun need, needs ammo. So you take the large ammo canister and you just go plonk. And now you have really big, powerful 180 millimeter gun. And you just set all the crap for the backpack to the back because it doesn't matter anymore. Now, I want to cover this real quick because we're going to get there. When you're folding the backpack back up, you just go bink, bink. That's fine there. And with the bottom part here, the way this hinge is actually made, you guys can probably see a little bit of stressing going on down there. Something is going on with mine. Sometimes it's fine. Look, if I try to push it, it gets hung up right about there. Or if I kind of really push it inward, then I can get it to come back up. And then you basically slide it back up until it taps together. But mine has a real big issue with those hinges wanting to get stuck. If yours is doing that, let me know. Um, cause I, you never really want to force it. It is plastic and it's going to give out on you. Believe me. Now what you could do with the big old gun is you have this big old handle and we have a hand for that handle right here. It's a nice little trigger hand. We've seen these before. Whoop. Hello. Come back here, little guy. And we could pop off the thumb and hand section there. Wrap that around said handle. I wish it had a tab. I wish it had a tab to go into the gun of some sort instead of very loosely holding it. And then you go ahead and slap the hand together. You wink off the other hand. Now, eventually, those are going to get real loose because you can see the stress marks from the ball joints. But I think it's probably good enough that it should be fine. And there you have him holding the huge 180 millimeter cannon like make my day. As if he's, as if he's dirty, Fre dirty Freddy, dirty Harry Gundam. Go ahead, punk. Make my day. Actually, that's not even what he says, but you guys should know this by now. But here you can get a really awesome, like, hey, what's going on over there? <laughs> but you can also utilize this big old handle right here. If I can get to it. There we go. And rotate this arm out as much as you can. See, this will be the problem with not having any tabs in that, that it does just go prunk off the thing. Um, if one were so inclined to always have this gun in the hand, one would definitely suggest gluing the hand together and leaving the gun in it permanently. So if you're not going to be flipping it around or taking it out of the backpack a lot, I would definitely suggest gluing the hand together permanently with the gun in it. But, as I was trying to say before I was so rudely disrupted, you can use the shoulder joints, the elbow joints, and even some wristing joints in there, and you can totally get him holding the cannon in such a way as to be killing things over there. So, hi! <laughs> What's that? <laughs> ah! It's too powerful. The tray fell away. So, yay! Big Gundam killing everything. Just boom, 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 boom. Hey! All right. <laughs> Maybe I can add some bullet effects. That'd be really funny. All right, so that's going to be it for all your weapons and accessories. All right, guys. So before we get to the end... Let's go ahead and look at the history of this kit. Not just this Gundam, but this kit. So, the last one we looked at is the Blue Destiny 3. Which is definitely a Gundam ground type, as we previously discussed. That's why they even kept the white and blue color scheme. And we've got the Blue Destiny 2 back here. Still Gundam ground type, but not quite. Not, not labeled a Gundam anymore, but definitely it is Gundam ground type based. And we can even get the Unit 1 in the back as well. Though you can't see that because he's way back there behind everybody. So I'll put him over here. Now, but the important thing is all three of these kits, four, I can't count, all spawned from this guy, as we kind of covered before. So all of these ground-type-based kits all came from the gym ground-type, the, the HGUC 202. And so even up to 209, still using a lot of the same engineering, a lot of the same design, even a lot of the same runners for framework and stuff like that. And, of course, the ground-type shield and the weapons and such like that. So this guy gets this really sweet bazooka and weapon mount on the butt. Why nobody else got that, I don't know. But the cool thing being, at least within Universe, 
this guy started everything. These were a branched evolution of their own of this guy. And then, of course, you've got the gym ground type that actually totally spawned from this. And, of course, oh. and, of course, the gym ground type, which is definitely based off of the Gundam ground type in universe and is also from the 8th MS team in the first place. And if we do get a new like revived version of the uh, Easy 8, that would be really, really cool. But I like the fact that, you know, basically this is this Gundam's family, so to speak. So the RX-79, which is what these guys are. These are all RX-79s. Of course, that's an RGM-79, but that's the difference of being a mass-produced version. So I'm happy with these. these. This was a fun collection to build, and the whole reason I was getting there in the first place, because it started with this guy and worked its way up to this guy. So I, I enjoyed this a lot. I actually like these kits. Each one does have its own little foibles, this one being some of the articulation problems and stuff like that with the chest, but though this is actually very much designed like the gym over there. I feel like it doesn't know where to focus. I'm going to tell it to focus right there in the middle. <laughs> but... I don't know. Let me know what you guys think about it. I, I really do enjoy these kits. I'm not going to get into what's a Gundam, what's not a Gundam argument. I've already had that argument, but this is definitely a Gundam. These were based off of it. So, but guys, if you like this video, if you like these, all of these videos, by all means, go watch them all again. Go ahead and give me a thumbs up on this video. Thumbs up. And of course, if you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down there because every little bit helps. All right, no. Because we're getting so close to 3,000, kind of stuck right now in the 2840s. Haven't really gained any new subscribers as of this video. Uh, so I'm trying to hit 3,000 by the you know, second anniversary of the channel. But guys, if you want to help things out, go ahead and hit up the Patreon right here on the screen and in the description down below. And go over there and be like John, Andy, Steve, Colby, and the Krosama. And donate a little bit every month just to keep the channel moving forward. Everything helps. Along with that, you could totally buy a Shoki shirt. A few of which here are on the screen. Everything's in a link down below if you need to go buy stuff. Because why not? But that's going to be it for this review of the Gundam Ground Type. Hope you have enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. And remember as always, to keep on building.